Hi, fans, and welcome back to Indiana Pacers basketball. It feels so good to say that. I'm Pat Boylan, and we're extremely excited to see the team back on the floor and very soon back in the playoffs. And as always on the Extra Pass presented by GEICO, we're eager to give you an inside look at all things Indiana Pacers basketball. But before we look forward on this show, we want to take a look back and remind you where we left off as we get ready for what's ahead. And while we've been without basketball for a while now, the past few months are ones that no one will forget as the world grapples with the pandemic and so many, including members of the Pacers, continue to admirably push for racial equality and social justice. The Pacers are currently doing that from Orlando in the bubble. We'll give you an inside look at how Miles Turner is getting by on and off the court. But let's begin by getting you caught up where the Pacers left off. Before the NBA's hiatus, the Pacers compiled a 39 and 26 record. That was good for fifth in the Eastern Conference. The Pacers certainly had a flair for the dramatic with numerous heart-stopping wins. Brogdon gets around. Oh, and yeah! Puts it down! Yeah! Way to go out of Malcolm! Strong left hand finish there. Shot clock is at nine. Screen Sabonis into Sabonis. Out to Turner. A three. Card! A switch the two of them. Ojale guarding Brogdon. Gets inside in the corner. Holiday for three. Hey. Good! Hey. Justin Holiday! <laughs> really good penetration, too. Oladipo has it. Hutchison, here's a long three by Oh, yeah, he's, he's back. back. He's back. Ladies and gentlemen, he's back. Gotta feel good for him. When they restart in Orlando, they'll have the realistic goal of moving into the top four in playoff seeding. They did all of that in the face of major injury struggles this year. Victor Oladipo made his triumphant return on January 29th dialing up the game time three and leading the Pacers to an overtime victory. But Oladipo played in just 13 games. His backcourt counterpart Malcolm Brogdon has shined bright in his first year in Indiana, averaging 16 points and seven assists. But Brogdon too has dealt with his fair share of injuries, missing 17 games this season. The duo, in fact, has only played 10 games together this year, but will share the starting backcourt in the restart. What a season it has been for DeMontis Sabonis, who averaged 19 points and 12 rebounds, earning his first All-Star selection. But the injury bug has been unkind to the Pacers this year. Sabonis is dealing with plantar fasciitis, and his status for the return is still to be determined. It took his front court mate Miles Turner some time to adjust to a brand new role, but Turner was excellent down the stretch before the hiatus. In his last seven, averaging 14 points, eight rebounds, and three blocks on 50% shooting. Turner's role will be increased due to the Sabonis injury. And we haven't yet named maybe the most consistent pacer all season, and Indiana's leading scorer, TJ Warren, who scored in double digits in 52 of his 61 games. Warren will likely be a major factor in the Pacers' success level in Orlando. Let's take a look now at part one of our peek inside the bubble with Pacers center, Miles Turner. So March 11th, when um, <laughs> everything just really went haywire, I remember we had just got done playing and I got back to the house and you know, I had just ate dinner, just regular night. I was actually playing video games and um, one of my boys from back home had FaceTimed me and was like, Yo, yo, did you hear the, the NBA season just got canceled? And I was like, what are you talking about? I just played a game like two hours ago, right? And he was like, um, yo, no, 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 like seriously, like they're they're having a whole uh, hiatus. And I was like, what? So first thing I did was turn on Sports Center, went on Twitter. Sure enough, you know, everything said, yeah, NBA is on a 30-day hiatus. Well, at the time, it was a 30-day hiatus and it was breaking everything. And, you know, me, I'm getting ready to practice tomorrow. I'm like, oh, you know, I practice tomorrow? Cool, like. <laughs> Um, so yes, there's a lot of uh, you know difficulty with staying in shape um, over the time uh, of this hiatus. You know, all the local gyms were shut down. You know, you couldn't really go to any courts, so you kind of had to get creative. You know, me personally, and I just made a made a gym in my my parents' garage and uh, was running around the neighborhood and just trying to stay in shape as best as I can. So I think that you know I came back in pretty good shape. You know, a lot of us did, and um, I just think that. We all had the cognitive ability to work with what we got. You know, it's kind of how we got to this level in the first place. So, um, 
I think that, you know, it, it was a test and I think that, you know, I passed it. When I'm looking back on when my dad had the virus, um, the, the, really what I remember is just like, when anything likes coming to man, you get a lot of ego and a lot of pride. So he didn't want to let, let us know he was sick. You know, he, we could tell someone was off, but you know, he was saying, I'm fine, I'm fine. You know, it's just, um, just feeling a little under the weather. He quarantined himself for about three or four days and then took him to the hospital initially, didn't have the virus or supposedly didn't have the virus. Two days later, it got worse. And on my birthday, actually, we took him back to the hospital and that's when he tested positive. So it was a very weird time because there was so much uh, we know so much more now than we knew back in March, and you know it was, it was a scary time. We'll continue our look inside the life of Miles Turner in just a little bit. 2020 will certainly be a year that no one forgets. On March 11th, the NBA paused its season after multiple players tested positive for the coronavirus. Players and fans alike went home to take care of themselves and loved ones. The hiatus brought many changes, but none bigger than the movement for change in racial equality. So many around the United States have united for a cause far bigger than themselves. Leading that charge, not just team-wide, but league-wide, was Pacers guard Malcolm Brogdon. I encourage people to educate themselves, because the more you educate yourself, the more you are inclined to make an impact, the more you are inclined to take action. It's hard when you go look at these statistics, when you go see the 12 you know, black people are 12% of that make up the population in the United States, yet we are 32% of uh, the prison population. It's hard to ignore that when you do your fact, when you do your research, you see those facts and then move on with your day. It's gonna be hard to do that and not want to provoke change. So I would say educate yourself. And then I would say, if you are comfortable, demonstrate, protest with us. I think there are a lot of white people right now that may be uncomfortable doing that with us. I promise you will be opened with welcome arms if you step in the street or you do what you're comfortable with and step by our sides and be our allies because your voice holds more weight than ours. We have about exhausted all of our resources over the past 500 years in counting to you know, see equality. What we want is we wanna live decent lives. What we want is we want decent, you know, we want opportunities. We, we feel like we, we know we deserve you know, our human rights. So what we need is for people of the of you know the white race to uh, step by our sides, to be our allies, to influence politicians, to change these policies that contribute to uh, a systematic uh, racism that uh, plagues our society. It's a movement that has been and continues to be championed by so many on the roster and in the organization. Once July rolled around, the sound of sneakers squeaking and the ball bouncing could be heard again. The Pacers, alongside 21 other NBA teams, headed to Orlando into the NBA's bubble. And after a period of quarantining, hit the court for training camp and then three scrimmages with the goal of quickly reacclimating to the high level they're used to playing at. How quickly the Pacers get up to speed very well could determine their success once the games count. Miles Turner knows his level of play will likely play a very big role in the Pacers' level of success in Orlando. Let's now take a look at part two inside the life of Miles Turner. Um, so you know, bubble life here in Orlando, it's um, you know, it's, it's not as bad as you know one may seem or one one may think. You know, I was very skeptical of it at first, but you know, I think the league has done a good job of um, you know providing us everything they need. They've been very receptive to. You know, things we ask for, we ask for, they'll make it happen. You know, I think it's probably the safest place, you know, in the U.S. right now. You know, there hasn't been any cases in the past week and a half, two weeks. So um, I think they did a good job of setting everything up, and you know, we'll see what goes from here. Um, I think that you know, us as the Pacers have a better chance than anybody to go out here and win this. I think that um, right now is going to be a time. There's such a time of uncertainty, but with that being said, you know, anybody can kind of come up and creep up and win this thing. You know, it's not just going to be your your set, um, your favorites that you have to win. Anything can happen uh, given the circumstances here. Uh, so with Domas, you know, having to leave to you know, deal with his injury, I think that it means I, I'm going to have to step up and play uh, significantly more minutes. Um, you know, me personally, I'm, I'm ready for something like that. I, I always keep myself prepared. You know, obviously he's going to be um, you know, a big piece that we're missing, but you know, I just got to fill the void. Yeah, so on the back of my jersey, I decided to put uh, Respect Us on the back of there. I think that as a whole, us as athletes, we're, we're viewed as just athletes. And um, 
you know, we're not just entertainment pieces. We're so much more than that. We have so much more to offer than just uh, being out on the floor dribbling. I think that our contributions to society, our contributions to our communities, um, that's where all this stuff really begins. And I think there's a certain group of people who look at us as just, you know, athletes to entertain them. And um, you know, we're so much more than that. We're human beings at the end of the day. You know, we advocate for certain things. And, um, you know, I, I hear people talking about how Black Lives Matter is, you know, it's political, it's this and that, when you keep politics out of sport. But no, Black Lives Matter is a, it's, it, it's a livelihood thing. It's a livelihood choice, you know? So, you know, it's a livelihood um, message that we're trying to get across right now. So I think more than anything that people need to realize that, you know, basketball is fun, it's what we do, but it's not, you know, our general makeup of who we are as a person. But now the games begin as the Pacers look to shock and surprise in the Eastern Conference. Just eight games remaining in the regular season. That will determine the Pacers' seed for the playoffs. Three of those final eight games will be against Philadelphia and Miami, the two teams they're closest with in the NBA standings. As always, you can catch games on Fox Sports Indiana and 1070 The Fan and across the Pacers radio network. Until next month on the Extra Pass presented by Geico, I'm Pat Boyd.